in this tutorial, I'm going to build a simulation of a spillway that releases water from a reservoir at a water level that is above the spillway crest elevation. And I'm going to do it with a broad crested weir equation. So we'll start where we left off in the last tutorial, number five, in which we looked at um, calculating evaporation losses. As you can see in this model, it's starting to get a little bit crowded. So I'm going to reorganize a little bit of this using containers. I'll start with the container element from here. I'm going to call this container flood control because this is where I'll put the calculations for the spillway flow. Right now I only have one element in related, that's related to that called overflow. And this is just using a simple um, uh, overflow method that uses an upper bound on the reservoir. Any uh, water volume that exceeds the upper bound will just um, be assumed to be released as an overflow. You'll see when we run this model that the water level is never allowed to rise above that upper bound. And this is okay for a simplistic accounting of water, but if you want to simulate the actual water surface as it might rise above the spillway crest and cause um, a discharge over the spillway, then we would want to um, set this model up a little bit differently. So that's what we're going to do now. I also want to save this model as a new version. I'll call this number six. I'll just save this on the desktop for now. Okay, so I'm going to move my overflow element into the flood control container. And I also want to move some of these uh, equations that have to do with the geometric relationship of depth and area into a separate container. So I'll do another container here and call this geometry. And then I'll just, I'm just holding down the shift key while I select these four elements. And now I can drag and drop them into the container. So we'll be doing things inside of this one. What I want to do now is I want to replace this overflow, which is just the output of the reservoir as it hits the upper bound. So I need to add this equation for the broad crested weir, which is flow equals the coefficient times the, um, the head over the, the, or let me, sorry, the length of the weir times the head over the weir to the power of three halves. So that's the equation I'm going to use to calculate flow. So let's just look at each part of these. Um, the C factor is something that um, it, it can be more complicated to, to arrive at, but for now, I'm just going to assume a constant that never changes. We can always come back and change these things later to make them more complicated. But for now, I'm just going to keep it simple and call this the weir coefficient. It's unitless, and I'm just going. I'm just going to say it's 3.1. The next one is the L. That's the length of the weir. This will also be a constant, and for now, I'll, I'll call this. Um, I'll, I'm just going to assume that it's one meter long, and that's the width across the the uh, the width across measuring perpendicular to the water flow. That's one meter. Okay, finally H, and this is calculated. It's calculated based on the depth. And as you know, in a previous uh, tutorial, we used a the, geom the geometry of the reservoir to calculate the depth over time. And this is rel relative to the volume that's being updated during the simulation. So this depth value is dynamic. I'm just moving things around a little bit here. Okay, so we're going to base the H value on the depth of water. So I'll use another expression here and call it H. This is the head over the weir. And I'll put it in terms of meters. And we're going to refer to the depth. And what we want to do is say, well, it's the depth. Um, to, in order to get the depth of water over the weir, we need the total depth in the reservoir and subtract from that the elevation of the weir. 
So let's just assume that the weird crest is at elevation 1753 meters. So all we need to do is say it's the depth minus 1753 meters. And as you can see, the starting because our starting uh, water level is below the crest of the spillway, we start with a negative um, H value, which is not appropriate for the calculation. We will never have a negative flow coming back into the reservoir. So we need to cap it at zero. And I'll do that using a max function. That's a built-in function, max comma zero meters. So now it will never go negative and it will only show a positive value once the water level in the reservoir rises above the crest of the spillway. The other thing that I need to fix here is that I'm hard coding that spillway crest elevation within the equation so that it makes it very difficult to ever change it in the future. We should then create another data element that will become our constant here called spillway crest. This way we can change it in the future if we ever need to. Um, and we said this is 1753, and that's in terms of meters. And now I can just refer to that variable name instead of the, the number itself, like that. Okay, so that's the, uh, the head, and you can see, because there's a dot in this input port, it's indicating that it's receiving a variable output from outside of this container. But the head is what we'll use to calculate Q. I'm going to just take this old overflow value, um, and actually, before I um, wipe out what we used to use, I'm going to um, record the output of this and put it in a time series so we can just compare what we used to be doing to what we're calculating now. And we do that with a time series recorder. So I'll start here with the time series and I'll put it next to the overflow and I'll give it uh, units that we've been using, liters per second. And now I'm going to say, instead of locally defined, I'll say recording and then I'll just reference the overflow and record it. Run the model and I'll look at the time history and you see this is the recording. Now that we're done recording, I can turn off the recording of the time series. I'll just change this back to locally defined. Now you see it stands alone as its own entity that every time I run the model, it will show me that old output of what we used to have in our overflow. So now I can get rid of this old one, replace it with a new overflow. And I'm going to change it actually to say Q. And um, I'll call this overflow uh, over the spillway for the reservoir. And this is still liters per second. And now I want to use the weir flow equation. So it's going to equal C times L. And by the way, this uh, equation has to be unitless. Um, so I'm going to cast out units. And one more thing about this is that the coefficient that I'm using is for an English units um, weir flow equation. So um, what we, the, the units that I cast out should be casting off unit uh, English units. So to cast a unit off of a, an, a variable like this one, L, it's in terms of a length. I need to cast off the units of length in English units. So to do that, you just type in the vertical bar and you put the unit in with another vertical bar and that will cast the units off in terms of feet. So it, what it does behind the scenes is it says, okay, this length is one meter. We're going to figure out what that is in, in feet and then cast those units off. So it's the way it's converting it and then taking the units off. All right, the next thing is to multiply it by the head at H and also cast those units off. Um, and those are also units. Um, we're casting them off as uh, units of feet. And then we take that up to the power of three over two. Now, the entire equation should result in CFS. So now I need to apply CFS units to this entire equation. So I'm putting it in brackets and saying CFS. Now what it does is it takes everything in there, which is unitless, and applies units of CFS to that. That's our, uh, our weird equation that we happen to be using here. But the result is going to show me in terms of liters per second. So the, the conversion is all being taken care of for us. Now we can go back over to our reservoir and apply this um, spillway discharge to the reservoir.
So I'm going back over to the reservoir and we also need to take off this upper bound. We don't have that anymore. We want to allow the water level to float above the spillway so we can calculate the spillway flow. And then I go into the outflows and add another one and I'll call this spillway flow. And then I'll just reference from our flood control container this element here called Q, like that. And another way we could do this, we don't have to put this whole equation in here. We could put this equation actually in the reservoir output as well. Either way would be fine. So what I mean by that is copy this equation, go up and over into the reservoir. Instead of typing in Q, just put the whole equation in there if you want. You can still see the equation that's being done, and it still gives you the same answer. What this allows us to do is it allows us to show the path of flow from the reservoir to another element. In this example, I could say the actual flow is coming out of the reservoir, so I'm just going to now reference this flow from that point. So I'm going back over to the reservoir, outflows, spillway flow. So now this is simply just a reference, referencing the calculated flow from the reservoir. So now when we go up here, what you'll see is there's an arrow going both directions. One of these arrows is the influence line that is going from our, our inputs over to the calculation that's going on inside the reservoir. The other line is the actual indicator of flow coming out of the reservoir. It's still just an influence line, but you can think of it as water flowing. Okay, now that we have that done, now what I want to do is I want to look at our time history chart and do the comparison of our old flow calculated and the new one. This queue is our new one. Now I'm going to come down here and add flood control this time series, which is the recording of the old. And I'll just call this overflow old. And I'll give it a similar color and make it, uh, actually I don't want to make it too similar, make it dash. There we go. Okay, run the model, and look at the results. And now what we see here, if you look at that dashed line, that's the instantaneous overflow just on an accounting basis. You can see it's quite a bit different from what we calculate in this lighter cyan color where it, it slowly ramps up and slowly back, back down. And it's all a function of the head over the weir, which is this point up here where our weir elevation is 1753. So anything above that point then would cause an overflow. We could also put the weir elevation in here, and that might help us to visualize spillway crest. That'll help us visualize when the overflow begins. So when our water surface elevation in blue crosses over that spillway level, then that's when the spillway begins to occur. All right, so in this model, we've been able to build a, uh, a simple spillway flow um, equation using the Weir equation and apply that to discharges from the reservoir. Thank you for watching.